Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Let's Play Hearts of Iron 4. Guys, right, guys, uh, well, United States, soon to be Totalist America. Welcome back. So, America is a bit of a hellhole at the moment. We're at negative 71% stability. We're losing about one political power per day. We have no civilian, um, we, we, we can't build anything right now at all. How many guns do we build? I mean, 11 per day? That's something, right? Do we long speaks? Democratic Party and the Republican Party are just like the old patent dr a medicine drummer that used to come around the country. He had two bottles of medicine, he played the banjo, and he sold two bottles of medicine. One of these bottles of medicine was called High Paprolum, and the other one of those bottles of medicine was called Low Paprolum. Finally, somebody around them uh, there said, is there any difference between these two bottles of medicines? Oh, he said, considerable. They're both good, but they're both different. That High uh, Paprolum... Uh, is made from the bark of the tree that we take from the top down, and that low purple room is from the bark that we take from the root up. And the only difference that I have found between the Democrat leadership and the Republican leadership is that one of them was skinning you from the ankle up, and the other from the ear drowned. When I got to Congress, when I got, to, I feel uh, okay. Sure, why not? Uh, we have six. Uh, well, we're still negative six rubber. <laughs> I mean, the, the political the, the political power is just incredible to me that like you just don't get any. You're not allowed to have political uh, power in this country. Don't care about you. Division basic training. I mean, we're missing thirteen thousand rifles. I don't think we're gonna be able to train any units, so I'm not I'm not gonna concern myself with that at the moment. Hey, the heat wave's over though, so I mean that's a stability boost. People from Vancouver and Los Angeles and New York and Washington, D.C. let out a sigh of relief as the great heat wave of 36 finally came to an end. Now, a cold front has spread over North America. It's commonly known as the United States' deadliest natural disaster of the 20th century, with the estimate death toll reaching 5,000. But, even as the heat wave ends, a new chapter of American history is about to begin. Also, Poland joined the Austrians. Not a big surprise. Many Republicans and Democratic representatives have announced that this year will be their last in Congress. But many retirees claim old age motivated them. Rumors of gang intimidation by SPA and AFP congressmen reminds many of the congressional brawl between Charles Sumner and Pe uh, Peston Brooks. Are they the ones in the um, before the American Civil War, like the first one, where I think he beat the other guy up with a cane? The unprecedented rate of retirement has given hope to the AFP and SPA that uh, they can win these open elections. Who's actually the most popular party right now? American First and the Socialists are about tied. I guess, actually, I guess a social... I mean, I guess it's just American First Party, right? The military junta and the civil religion technically aren't part of the American First Party. I, I still love, though, who, who are these 9% of people supporting the, the military junta? I guess it actually maybe isn't that surprising. Costa Rica has requested our assistance. as that to strike the otherwise quiet nation of Costa Rica when the ZKG crashed hard on the Berlin Stock Exchange just a few weeks ago. Okay, Flanders in the Reich's Pact. We'll, we'll help them out. Why not? Flanders, are you a Dutch puppet? No. Oh, you've gone uh, totalist. Okay. Question is, are the Cana are Germans going to invade or is France going to back them? We will see very soon. I believe if France backs them, the, the, um, the Germans will back off. That's just how... Um, the Vilkrieg mechanics work. Early Vilkrieg, I think it's disabled by default. Canada has agreed to compromise. The Canadian government has reluctantly agreed to a compromise, giving us uh, our payment they can now and accepting to deter until the home islands have been retaken. In exchange, a trade agreement has been put in place with the Entente, something that's likely beneficial for all of us. The main downside is that the agreement has been viewed as treachery by the AFP and the SPA, both of which claim our corrupt government has betrayed the very people they fired up only moments before. Oh, you get 200 political power. We can utilize that to... Weekly stability can go up. Higher, uh... Who do, who do we want? Stability plus 10%. Again, it's not like this really matters. This really is just going to help, um, or it's going to affect mostly... Um, MacArthur's government. So, you know what? Why not have the FBI director? There we go. So stability now goes up by 0.3%. Okay, fantastic. Okay, so it's 36 right now. We, again, we wanted to get cheap technology that I know it can be able to get research done prior to the war. Like, these are just going to take too long. You're going to take too long. 
166 days? We can probably, we can probably get a 36 plane in time. Okay, Wallonia Crisis. I should have actually read about who, uh, who's going to win there. Battles between the SBA and the AFP. The number of major cities conflict between supporters of the American First Party and the Socialist Party have broken out in violence. Partisan fist fights and even shootouts are starting to become a regular occurrence throughout the nation as the country spirals ever deeper into chaos. While public eruptions are easy to counter, the enclaves uh, these radicals have cut out in the city block run on graft are harder to stop. With the chaos, moderate elements of the country have grown fearful of extremist uh, factions, and a beleaguered establishment campaigns have seen a wave of donations of volunteers. Both Landon and Gardner have made promises to reverse the depression and bring back order. Governor Olson has launched an aggressive counterattack to reclaim his supporters. However, as the country groans under the weight of the economic depression and political instability, many feel the political system they put their trust in deck for decades will soon give out. Okay, so that's going to give a little bit less support for the uh, socialist. France has abandoned Wallonia, so they will get killed by Germany here. But I don't, I mean, they, they can't survive, right? Well, well maybe they could. Six to 22 divisions. Like, if you remember back to our, um, if you remember back to our Belgium campaign, when we had to fight, we didn't have to fight the Germans. We just were able just to hold this river for, I think it was like the six months or whatever it was for Germany to peace out. The okay, radicals have won the Serbian election, which are the market liberals. Again, it doesn't really matter so, so much. I mean, I guess we want them to win just because one, they would then back Russia, who's anti-German, and Bulgaria could theoretically go socialist, which can lead them to join the uh, could lead them to join the uh, International, which would be nice as well. Well, Poland's have literally two percent support right now. That's actually kind. That's kind of incredible to have to have two percent support. Okay, the election will be happening very soon. And you don't really give us anything. Three days on you, then we do the US Navy. And I think once that's done, there's really nothing we could end up doing until um, the elections. And then we'll do the US Navy. Because after that, I mean, there's, again, there's like nothing else you can really do. Let's build like experimental carriers, why not? I don't think I've ever clicked the build carrier button in my entire life, so it's, a, it's like a rush. It's a, it's a new experience for me. Let's get these guys not to be all the way over here. Just focus maybe, I don't know, around this area seems fine. And again, we have, I want to say, 170 days is, we, we might be able to get this done. Sardinia, Bulgaria, and Nez and Haas are doing pretty okay. And the 1936 presidential election. There's also finally in for what is probably the most ideological contested presidential election the United States has ever witnessed. None of the four major parties has secured enough votes in the Electoral College to outright win the presidency. And as a result, the House of Representatives have to vote on the winner of the election for the second time this decade. This is probably not an answer to problems, but for the time being, victory will go to Jack Reed. 20% support, which also gives us coalition partners we have we actually have more than 50 percent of the government right now but once you're done you grant us the ability to do this and do we want to focus on longest or next sweeping reforms probably in that sweeping reforms would be my guess the AIP have contested election results American first party leadership is a contested result of the election they claim that Reed's allies have read the election and demanded a recount. Reed Long even gave a mocking speech accepting the presidency to his followers. Some rumors from inside the AAP have reported that the Democrats that left for the AAP have expressed regret for losing this historic election. Okay, so the AAP is pissed. Not a, not a huge surprise, though. Okay, Spain and Civil War has broken out. Okay, A and I have won the uh, Italian election here. Legion of Italy, welcome, welcome. Well, we're not going to vote on this. We, we have more important things to do than vote on famine relief. Uh, what else have I never built? Why not, like, a, we'll build, like, a dreadnought, and then why not build a heavy cruiser? Seems okay.
20 days left on you. Hoover has criticized the president. Robert Hoover has been vocal at the election and openly criticized Reid and the SPA as being unfit to lead the country. Hoover has encouraged both the Republican and Democrats to form an alliance to curb Reid and the SPA. I mean, Jack, um, well, his name's John Reed, technically, but Jack Reed, he's not actually the president yet, right? He's the president-elect. But I don't think he's president until late January. Okay, totalists have won in Italy. Who won in, um, France? We got Syndicalist and two totalist powers. Bologna is now in the right spect. Not a, not a huge surprise. But that should weaken them a decent amount to give uh, France a little bit of a bonus. Uh, once the war actually does begin. Wait, what are you guys doing? You are social democratic. They could go syndicalist. Baltic State. I think you nap pop, right? Yeah. Okay. Aside from that. Again, nothing. What about Middle Africa? What are they up to? 27% stability. Okay, so they might not end up collapsing. We'll see, though. Yeah, there's nothing we can do with you. Let's get uh fight an interception. Again, it doesn't really matter because one, American Civil War, the navies don't matter too much. And two, uh, we're not gonna be playing at the uh federal government for too much longer, so we're we're, we're okay with this. Yeah, there's really nothing we can do. You're both 21 day focuses, but we'll have 10 days stored up. Which basically means that you're actually 11 day focuses. And look at that, we're technically gaining political power now. Mostly because our party is way more popular than the Republicans, so we're getting way more stability off of that. What are you, your war support factory output was 10%. Focus on defense, surprisingly. We know Mexico's gone totalist. Part of commune is still cynicalist, but I think their election is sometime later this year. Oh, the Rad Sock, actually. But again, I think their election is later this year. What are we missing? We're missing sport equipment. Eh, we, don't have to, we don't have to worry about that, I think. Is there any... There's nothing we can possibly research in like three days, right? Like, I'm, I'm, I'm very confident with that. Let's go basic engine, why not? Should be okay. Okay. War in the Balkans. United States fall in the Civil War. What are you guys up to? We got the Levee Provinces. Ireland's joined the Reich's Pact. You're just the Beijing government now. Okay. Again, it doesn't matter what we research. None of the stuff we're researching now we're ever going to actually be able to utilize. Well, we'll actually have to basically re-research it again once we switch countries. Oh, wait, 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 it's fine. It's okay. okay. Oh, the Ottomans are also in the war as well. The president reads the inaugural address. The country's social policy have forced the American people to turn to radical solutions. The two-party system has broken down. Jack Reed has been sworn in as the 31st president of the United States, with Norman Thomas being sworn in as vice president. In a stirring speech in Washington, D.C., Reed has pledged to defend the interests of the workers and work uh, to help revolutionize society for the good of all Americans. However, the SPA's slim majority in Congress means that they, will find it, they may find it challenging to pass meaningful legislation, especially in the Senate, where the AFP has a promise to filibuster any law it seems that detrimental to America. Okay, which then means we can then enact sweeping reforms. Executive Order 7080, Labor Unions. One of Reed's first acts as president is to enshrine the rights of collective bargaining into law. Unwilling to wait for to overcome the Senate filibuster and sign a violent conflict between the AFP and the SPA bill meritories, Reed has passed an executive order to force the state and federal governments to recognize the union's right to exist and engage in collective bargaining, without exception, thus uh, forbidding yellow dog contracts. While the unions rejoice many in the country to announce the executive order as a trail act of the executive branch. 29 days act quickly. Well, follow you want to see true, enact sweeping reforms. Not that within 46 days you get times up. The bourgeoisie are furious. From New York to San Francisco, the rich and powerful protested Reed's election in the Hearst newspapers and in congressional addresses. It is clear that the upper class is furious at the enactment of Executive Order 7080 and have begun to radicalize against the SPA as a result. Okay, 
Long Yun is the power in Yunnan. You are... I don't really know, to be honest. Okay, Executive Order 7089, halt on foreclosures. Directing the Secretary of Commerce to temporarily take possession of and operate the facilities of certain financial companies. The inability to deal with the Great Depression has been the death of two major parties. And it could have been the death of the SBA as well, unless Reed acted quickly and decisively. Believing that the corrupt financial sector was primarily responsible for creating and prolonging the Depression, Reed has moved to nationalize the banks of Wall Street to force them to act in the public rather than the private good. This includes stopping banks from foreclosing on bankrupt homeowners. A filibuster by Senator Roosevelt has forced Reed to uh, resort to executive order, appealing yet again to national security. While popular with lower classes, many in the upper classes claim Reed is drunk on his power and well on his way to declare himself a dictator. Okay. The opposition announces Reed as a tyrant. Uh, though they agreed on little else, the Democrats, Republicans, and the American First Parties have quickly are quick to announce Reed publicly across the nation for the enactment of Executive 807080, claiming that it has been an overreach of the executive branch and a start to slide into tyranny. Huey Long has gone so far as to vow to not follow any law that dictator Reed imposes upon America. Long followed up by comparing President Reed to Vladimir Lenin, almost gloating that Reed would share Lenin's fate. <laughs> this is the description. Just fucking shut up, shut up, Long. Okay, but I, that's basically it. I believe in about one month from now, the Civil War should break out. Supreme Court hears case on Order 7089. Supreme Court has allowed the first challenge to Executive Order 7089, Standard Oil of California versus Palmatic, to be heard. This case was brought by Palmatic to argue that Standard Oil's monopolistic power has overtaken Democratic power. The accusation of Standard Oil bribing the Boston City Council has been taken very seriously. Nation awaits to see if Reed's power will be checked or whether the SPA will continue to enact their agenda in defiance of the Senate. Negative 68 stability, by the way. Again, it, it should be very, very, very soon. Okay, Executive Order 7100 Nationalized Minerals. Direct the Secretary of the Interior to temporarily take possession of and operate the facilities of uh, certain mining companies. The belief that public land was a public good is essential to most left-leaning parties, and the flagrant abuse of public land by mining companies had long been a source of deep bitterness for the transcendentalist. To most of Reed's cabinet, it's clear that private mining companies would be entirely unable to balance the needs of the public with the degree, and the move to nationalize the drilling and mining companies, including Standard Oil, whose Supreme Court case against the Executive Order 7089 is still pending. This has been seen by many as an attack against a political rival, and further confirmation that Reed wishes to turn America into a cynical state like the Commune of France or the Union of Britain. And, and uh, MacArthur should be arriving very soon. Okay, uh, looks like the Carlos have been defeated. CNT is doing pretty well for themselves, I would say. They should be getting volunteers from... Yeah, from uh, Commune in Britain. Packing the court. Although Reed has shown no sign of concern over Standard Oil versus Palmer taking in the public, his administration is concerned that the conservative-leaning Supreme Court could rule 7-2 in favor of the capitalists and revert whatever reforms had already been put in place. Citing Lincoln's court packing during the Civil War as president, Reed has asked Senate Majority Leader uh, Meyer Landon to remove the filibuster for judicial appointees and increase the size of the Supreme Court to 15. It is clear that he intends to appoint six pro-socialist justices to the branch, which will ensure his executive orders are main or will remain constitutional. This has revoked a firestorm of protest, even from left-leaning former labor and progressive parties, which had up until now remained neutral or supportive of Reed. Look, okay, you got 2% of the vote. I have, uh, like, 40 or 54%. We're not in this, we're not even in the same league. We're, we're, we're completely separate here. Violence against the SPA spreads. In the immediate aftermath of Reed's court packing, former Governor Huey Long has come out aggressively against Reed, all but calling for an armed uprising. Whole counties and states, especially in the South, are refusing to accept Reed's executive orders as law, and there has been a massive increase in violent clashes between the Minutemen and the SPA militia. Unless order is restored, the country is bound for a civil war. Negative 72% stability, by the way. So soon... It's sometime in March. I just... Again, like, you think at this point I would just know when it, these happen, but... Long's call for resistance against Reed have been interpreted by some Minutemen as a call for resistance against any government agency. 
Please flash with Long's Minutemen have now become common throughout the country. In cities with strong SPA presence, member of the General Defense Committee, how the police restore law and order. But in the Deep South, the Minutemen effectively have complete control. So I think MacArthur... MacArthur marches into the country. And then... Okay, there he is. Welcome, MacArthur. Read support of Washington, D.C. has finally bottomed out. She was staff juggling, uh... Chief of Staff General Douglas MacArthur marched on the White House today with National Guard and Army units to restore order. I declared President Reed to be incapable of properly carrying out the functions of the constitutional president and attempted to arrest him at the White House. MacArthur marchers reminded many of D.C. of Cox's Army 1932, except that these soldiers are motivated to preserve the status quo instead of smashing it, and were cheered instead of booed. I've been tipped off by the SPA informants and MacArthur's general command staff. However, President Reed was able to stay ahead of General MacArthur's men and escape the Capitol by motorcade. MacArthur's uh, children who have at the White House, we coordinated an investigation into Reed's actions from the Oval Office. So are even suggesting that should Vice President Norman Thomas prove equally incapable, General MacArthur might be sworn in as provisional president. Okay, we're now led by military junta. I think the soldiers have gotten even more popular. President Reed has escaped to Chicago. President Reed has escaped to Chicago and declared that MacArthur is a traitor to all people of America. His calls have gained a great deal of support in the steel battles and a number of governors have already announced that they do not recognize the illegitimate authority of the current government. They have closed off their borders to American soldiers, raising a chilling specter of, of the civil war the country experienced less than a century ago. The revolution has begun. Stand by the workers. So we will now be playing at the CSA. Force we to get all the technology. Yeah, they just reset. That, that sucks, but what can you do? You have two single units. Gonna put you near the Washington border. Wait, no, these. No, the AI chose these. Computer machine. Yeah, I, I have to remake these. Okay. You're fine. We'll go Excavation 1 on you. 37. The rest of these, I think, are fine. I, I'm okay with the rest of you. So we'll do the Second Continental Army. Follow that up with. How many trains do we have? 40. 9 militia, 21 militia in Illinois. Absolutely, we we'll go with them first. So, decisions available. Get our Army Navy experience. I'm going to take trains just in case. It is a stability loss, but what can you do? There we go. Build some factories, dockyards. Oh, I have, I have a port. Look at me go. Also, don't build this. What the hell are you doing? Uh, honestly, probably build... Let's build, like, some nice submarines. We won't reorganize the rail system at the moment. Stand off in America. We have more and more units. All of you will just deploy onto this line now. We gotta prepare our march on the Washington. Rise of New England and New York. In recent days, syndicalist militia have been struggling and failing to take control of the northern, northeastern states, from New York to New Jersey all the way up to the coast of Maine. So far, governors in the region have planned down hard on violence, though the result has been a series of violent riots in Boston and Buffalo, not to mention a wave of uprisings still ongoing within New York City itself. Since it's drawn edge, and governors have denied the federal government permission to raise local militias in the area, fearful of increasing tensions further. A uh, few New England governors have reported to quietly asking the Canadian government to intervene should the worst come to worse. In the siege of New York City, it seems foreign agitators have already activated in America, as French and British provocateurs and agents inside of New York City's poor boroughs to the revolution. Many businessmen could not escape, have been lynched, but the mob violence had been quieted by the arrival of trained organizers, both civilian and military from Britain and France. The National Guard has surrounded the city uh, in a loose siege stretch from Newark to Yonkers, preventing social militias from entering or leaving the city, but not uh, yet attempting to assault on Manhattan. How many troops do you get from New York? Also, we can create an agency. You might as well get that going right now. 16! Okay, that's pretty good. That's the number I like to see. General of MacArthur sworn in as president. General MacArthur's temporary cockpit to the White House has not led to... Has not, uh... Has led not to a common attention, but a fiery shockwave of resistance all across the nation. With the situation worse than in D.C., uh, could have predicted new president of succession laws passed quickly by a joint session of run Congress, shorn of its SBA and AP members, uh, decreed that in the case of presidential incapacitation uh, or absence, the vice president and the cabinet had the authority to transfer the presidential authorities as commander-in-chief to another member of the military or government. 
In the case, the entire cabinet in incapacitation is possibly the executive shall fall to the chief of staff of the United States Army. Thus, MacArthur is even more hurriedly sworn in his midst of his preparations for the upcoming civil war and is laid to address the nation, reminding all traitors that they still have time to lay down their arms. So who's over? I think you're like the California um, governor that's in charge. Illinois General Assembly invites the IWW. The state legislators of the Illinois have invited the IWW to discuss the current crisis and looming deadline issued by the federal government. Jack Reed accepted the offer and has held an informal meeting with several trade union leaders prior. We made clear that the situation with Dyer and the SPA would need to un uh, unite behind the IWW in order to survive the coming conflict. This silent agreement meant that the traditional SPA leadership would be reorganized along industrial unionist lines, that each union representative allowed a single vote. The SPA immediately and unanimously pledged their support for social revolution through direct action, not diplomacy. Okay, we have another factory here. Um, I'm going to then build some convoys, which I guess we got from New York City. Okay, so I'm going to prepare you guys again to march your way down to Washington. Western Governor's effect to the PSA. When federal troops withdrew from the areas of the Rocky Mountains, there were initially split responses. The governors of Nevada, Richard Kerman Sr., refused to allow federal troops to evacuate or abandon their equipment. But the governors of Arizona, Idaho, Utah were more willing to accommodate the president. However, the recent regional conf uh, conference of four governors in Salt Lake City has led to them deciding to collectively rely on the provisional government of California for protection and support. Apparently, most of them uh, were led to this prior to their clear abandonment of Washington government. They've been to make, they have announced because of their stakeholder pro forma, and the Sacramento government has already sent its own soldiers and airmen to occupy the abandoned bases in the West. Okay, delusion of the U.S. Navy. The decay of order in the United States has impacted the U.S. Navy just uh, as much as every other facet of American society. Many sailors and even some officers are sympathetic towards what the Naval High commanded had dubbed Forces opposed to Republican public order, avoiding mentioning any political terms to stay impartial as possible. Still, defection becomes the norm. At first, the Naval High Command managed to prevent the collapse of the fleets, detaining soldiers and officers loyal to the syndicalist cause, but they could not keep this up for long. Events on the West Coast caused the disintegration of the U.S. Navy. Battles between federal loyalists and mutinist uh, ships have broken out in the Pacific fleet, giving sailors across the Union a chance to break with the regime of Washington. Though some have declared for the longest, others announced their support for the revolution in Chicago. Even a few high-ranking captains which, which sides and align with us. We have also seized uh, reserve fleets and uh, vessels stationed in the Northeast. From them and from the rival revolutionary sailors, we will be able to assemble a modest naval force. By the way, you don't have a... Uh, you need a... Uh, field marshal, thank you. Are you really the best we have? You're not. Let's put something better in here. So we do have a small navy now. Fantastic. Hey, we've captured Minnesota. As federal forces led Minnesota, Floyd Olson's old uh, friend, Governor Pedersen, realized that his state would be torn apart unless he surrendered Jack Reed's Chicago regime. While there is some protest, the fact that his state has been close to voting Reed in the 36th election helped sway the people in Minnesota to follow their governor in the arms of the socialist. Okay. New Mexico's fall to Huey Long. Iowa has surrendered to us. Striking workers in Des Moines and Cedar Rapids today were joined by newly arrived militias. Reed's now openly declared as CSA. Police officers attempting to defend Iowa State Capitol were massacred by the mob as the seat of legislature was invaded by the workers. Governor Crashow, probably seeing the which way the tides were flowing, had decided to surrender his state to the Chicago government as a new state of the CSA. We should get, I think, maybe like one or more one or, one or two more states. Okay, so you've taken more territory here. We're not going to read their events for them taking over land. I'm not too worried about it. Denver is Colorado. Okay. The Denver Resolution for Democracy. Okay, no, this this is also for them. So, yeah, they've gone towards PSA and American Union State. And Jack Reed declared the March Revolution. In the Illinois General Assembly, Reed de uh, delivered a fiery broadcast describing the wealth of America and the syndicates. Declaring that direct action against the capitalist society was a vital necessity for all Americans and that the federal government's deadline must not only be ignored, but it must be defied. Telegrams from the Third International poured in in support of Reed's SPA, exciting the attendance. Vote was called to begin reforming the American capitalist economy into a narco syndicalist economy. This referendum, signed by the attendants, created the Federal Reserve null and void. The IWW was appointed the Labor uh, Chamber for the new syndicalist government, and the selling of the company's shares declared illegal. Representatives, satisfied with their success, have returned to Chicago to organize the armed revolution. By the way, how long until the deadline? We have 14 more days. So we're going to end this episode on the day the Civil War actually breaks out. 
Also, that is a massive army. So we'll get our new leader in here. You will be on this border. I think that seems reasonable. We will then deploy units in New York City. SBA partisans in Buffalo. Well, President MacArthur's troops have uh, complied with obedience and loyalty to Governor Lemon in New York and Albany. It seems that more of the state than New York City has slipped out from his control. Revenant strikers from the recent disturbances of Rochester and Buffalo have joined the partisans of Reed government in Chicago. We have uh, united to overthrow the city's government and invite CSA soldiers to protect the state. Sending an opportunity to get closer to New York City, General Butler has ordered an advance up to Scotland, Source, and Niagara Falls. Okay. Fantastic. Okay, so long as have won in Tennessee. And the battle, so this is for Missouri, it looks like. Okay, we captured North South Dakota as well. While well, Western militias had hoped to continue to race towards the Midwest and the Great Lakes, it seems that militias and soldiers of the Combine Syndicates have finally organized themselves enough to methodically encircle both Pierre and Bismarck and force both cities to surrender. California forces have been beaten back to Highway 5 on the border between South Dakota and Wyoming, and it seems that the race to cash to the West is now over. There will be a hard struggle between the social and provisional governments. Although federal troops left Missouri some days ago, Governor Stark had not yet declared for any rival government. In an attempt to gain the most favorable position in the Midwest possible, General Butler has dispatched militias to seize uh, St. Louis across Missouri from uh, Illinois. They encountered Governor Stark's National Guard at East Bridge on the border, and skirmishes ensued. A militia on both sides attempted to cross the river, uh, around the bridges without success. Five social militias managed to break through the defenses around the bridges and break into striking St. Louis, where the people's government was set up. Governor Stark has fled to south to Baton Rouge, but Missouri is in the hands of the SPA. I think we, we might even get Kentucky, honestly. Okay, they've been reveled from North Carolina. We are going to need more units. We have nine days till the war breaks out. But I think what I think our best choice is Oh, this Okay. Apparently, uh Long got this territory here. Bit of a shame, but what can you do? Keep you here for now. You actually took back South Carolina. Huh. Okay, General Strike moves on the Federal Reserve. General Strike, whose goal has been to protect workers from federal tyranny, now moves to seize the means of production. Red Guard have ordered an evacuation of Lower Manhattan in order to both seize the gold in the Federal Reserve Bank as well as dismantle Wall Street. In the de delegation were reporters who allowed, who were allowed to watch Congressman uh, carry safe boxes away for safekeeping in Chicago. These items were put under the trust of the IWW, who have elected Norman Thomas as their undersecretary. Some SBA politicians were arrested in Washington, D.C. for meeting outside the Ed Circles building, ordering the Federal Reserve Chairman Eugene Black to hear their petitions. I'm a little bit worried about um, New England has submitted to MacArthur. We received news that England has asked Canada for protection, but the government of Canada's Ottawa has refused. And the war is about to break out. Four days on you. You'll be ready in nine days. Yeah, the deadline looms. Do we get a... I don't know if we get units for... Okay, long as uprising suppressed in New Jersey. The longest can't get New Jersey, right? Like, that's not a thing they can do. At least I'm pretty sure they can't do. But with that, the war has begun. We have one more factory. I think we should be getting some more uh, stuff soon. I think we do get more factories in a moment. But for now, with the war having begun, I think it's going to be a good time for us to end this episode. Thanks to everybody for watching. My name is Anthony. If you enjoyed, my thumbs up. Now, do we click some down? Be sure to subscribe and goodbye.